The sermon for Sexagesima Sunday, the Word of God. Blessed are they who hear the Word of God and keep it. My dear brethren, we read in the Gospel that the Redeemer of the world said such wonderful and astonishing things in his sermons to the people that a woman in the multitude raised her voice and cried out, Blessed is the womb that bore thee and the paps that gave thee suck. But Jesus Christ answered immediately, Yea, rather blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Perhaps it seems to you, my brethren, that Jesus Christ teaches us that he who hears the word of God with the earnest wish to profit by it is more pleasing to God than he who receives him in holy communion. Yes, without doubt, my brethren, we have never really understood what a precious gift the word of God is. Ah, my brethren, if we rightly understood it, with what reverence and love should we not listen to it? Let us not deceive ourselves. The word of God must of necessity bear within us either good or bad fruit. The fruit will be good if we are all well prepared to receive it, namely, by a real desire to profit by it and to do everything that it prescribes. It will be bad if we hear it with indifference or perhaps with distaste and disesteem. This sacred word will enlighten us and show us how to fulfill our duties, or it will blind us and make us stiff-necked. So as to prove this more clearly to you, I will show you how great is the word of God. So as to impress upon you the exalted worth of the word of God, I will specify that the entire extension and progress of the Catholic religion is the work of the Word, joined with grace, which is always with it. Yes, my brethren, we can even say that accepting the death of Christ on Mount Calvary and baptism, our holy religion gives us nothing that can be compared to the Word. How many persons are there not in heaven who re never received the sacrament of penance? How many others who have never received the blessed sacrament? How many there are in heaven who neither receive confirmation nor extreme unction? As far as instruction in the word of God is concerned, it is as hard for us when we've arrived at the age when instruction is necessary for us to get to heaven without instruction as it is without baptism. We shall find out at the day of judgment that the greater number of Christians who are lost were damned because they did not know their own religion. Let us ask the souls of the lost Christians why they are in hell. They will all avow that the cause of their damnation was either that they would not hear the word of God or that they despised it. But you may ask, what effect has the sacred word upon us? I say that it resembles that pillar of fire which guided the Jews when they were in the desert, which stood still when the people should stand still, and moved on when they were to move on, so that the people had only to follow it faithfully, to be sure of not taking the wrong road on their way. Yes, my brethren, it does the same in regard to us. It is a bright torch which enlightens us and guides us in all our thoughts, undertakings, and actions. It enlightens our faith, fortifies our hope, inflames our love of God and our neighbor. It describes to us the majesty of God, the blessed end for which we were created, the goodness of God, his love for us, the value of our soul, the sublime reward which is promised to us. At the same time, it depicts for us the gravity of sin, the sorrow which it occasions God, the misery into which it will plunge us in the next life. It brings us face to face with the judgment which threatens sinners, and we shudder at the awful picture which it conjures up. Yes, my brethren, this word determines us to believe all the most mysterious truths of our holy religion without indulging in subtle inquiries, for it confirms our faith. Tell me, are we not all of the same opinion that after a sermon our hearts are touched and full of good resolutions? while those who despise the word of God reject and despise all those means of salvation which God has given us? Tell me, my brethren, of what did the patriarchs and the prophets 
Jesus Christ himself and his apostles, as well as all their holy father, followers, avail themselves to strengthen and spread our holy religion if it was not the word of God. For instance, what did Jonas do when the Lord sent him to Nineveh? None other but announced the word of God by telling them that within forty days the place would be destroyed. Was it not this sacred word which changed the hearts of the inhabitants of this large city, who from being great sinners became great penitents? What did St. John the Baptist do to make the Messiah, the Redeemer of the world, known? Did he not preach the word of God? What did Jesus Christ himself do when he passed through the cities and places where he was always surrounded by a crowd of people who followed him as far as the desert? What other means did he make use of but this sacred word to instruct the people in that religion which he was going to found? Tell me, my brethren, what made all the great ones of this world forsake their possessions, their parents, and all their comforts? Was it not because they had heard the word of God, which opened the eyes of their soul and showed them the short duration and the perishableness of all created things and persuaded them to acquire eternal goods, as, for example, a St. Anthony, a St. Francis, a St. Ignatius? Tell me. Who can make children understand to honor their father and their mother and to consider them indeed the representatives of Almighty God? The instruction which they receive in Sunday school from those who have charge of their soul, whereby the great reward which they may expect if they're good, obedient children is impressed upon them. What kind of children are those who despise their parents? Alas, my brethren, how many wicked, ignorant children are there not who in consequence of their ignorance are unchaste and disorderly and who often bring their parents with sorrow to the grave? What causes a neighbor to be kind to his neighbor if it is not the instruction which he heard where it was made clear to him how pleasing to God is the love of our neighbor? Or at another time when he heard the terrible condition of the sinner described who falls into the hands of the living God. Listen for a moment, and I will give you a proof of this, which will convince you. It is related that a French army officer happened to be stationed in a place where a mission was being held by a certain Father Bredain. Curious to hear the priest who had such a great reputation, and whom he did not know, he entered the church where Father Bredain was just depicting in awful colors the state of a soul steeped in sin, the blindness of the sinner who remains in his sins, and pointing out how easy it was to give up a sinful life by means of a general confession. The soldier was so touched at this, his remorse of conscience was so great, or rather it was so unbearable, that he made the resolution at that moment to make a general confession. He waited for the missionary at the steps of the pulpit and told him that he desired to confess the sins of his whole life. Father Bredain treated him with the greatest kindness. Father, said the officer, I will do all that you will tell me to do. I have the greatest desire to save my soul. He made his confession with the greatest piety and contrition which could be expected of a converted sinner. He admitted indeed that it seemed to him as if a heavy burden was taken off his conscience each time he accused himself of a sin. His confession ended. He left Father Bredain and wept tears of bitter repentance. The people were astonished to see this a soldier shedding so many tears, and they asked him the cause of his trouble. Ah, my friends, how sweet it is for me to shed tears of love and gratitude I who have lived so long at enmity with God. Oh, how blind is man who does not love God and who lives at enmity with him while God loves him so tenderly. The soldier sought Father Bredain in the sacristy and declared in the presence of the other missionaries that he had never in his whole life experienced such unalloyed happiness as he did at that moment 
when he was in the state of grace. My fathers, I do not think that my sovereign, whom I have served for thirty-six years, can be as happy as I am. I do not believe, in spite of all the pleasures which surround his throne, that he can enjoy the contentment that I do, after having laid down the dreadful burden of my sins by repentance, and having made the firm resolution to do penance for them. I would not exchange my happiness for all the wealth and all the pleasures of this world. With these words he pressed Father Bredain's hand and begged him to pray to God for him that he might have the grace to be a true penitent all his life long. Now, my brethren, what was the cause of this soldier's conversion? None other than the word of God, which he understood and which found his heart docile to the call of grace. Ah, how many Christians would be converted if they were so happy as to listen to the word of God with a good intention. What good thoughts and good resolutions would be awakened in their hearts? How many good works for heaven would be accomplished? He who is not moved by the word of God is lost, unless a miracle should happen, which very seldom does. Oh, my God, who could believe that anyone could display such indifference at the thought of such endless misery? Meanwhile, before we proceed any further, we will examine into the condition of most of this congregation. You know that sin reigns in your hearts, and you know that so long as this sin reigns there, you can expect nothing else but an eternity of misery. Oh, my God, this thought alone should frighten us almost to death. Ah, God saw beforehand how few would profit by this word of life when he spoke the following parable in the gospel. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, and some fell upon a rock and withered away, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns choked it, and finally some fell upon good ground and yielded fruit a hundredfold. You see, my brethren, that Jesus Christ shows us that of all the people who hear the word of God, only a fourth part derive profit from it. It would be a good thing if among every four persons there should be one to profit by it. Oh, that the number of good Christians was greater than it is. The apostles were astonished at this parable, and they asked him to explain it to them. Jesus Christ then explained it to them. The heart of man is like unto a field, which brings forth fruit according as it is either well or badly cultivated. The seed, Jesus Christ said to them, is the word of God. It falls by the wayside when those that hear it do not change their lives or make the sacrifices which God asks of them, so that they might become good and pleasing to him. They will not forsake the company or the places where they have so often offended God. Others, again, are restrained by a false fear of man which causes them to waver in all the good resolutions which they formed when they heard the word of God. The seed which fell among thorns are those who hear the word of God with joy, but it produces no good results in them. They hear it gladly, but they are not willing to do what it commands. The seed which fell upon the rock are those who have a hard and stubborn heart, who hear the word of God to find fault with it and to abuse it. Finally, the seed which falls on good ground are those who ardently desire to hear it and to embrace every opportunity which God gives them to profit by it as much as possible, and only in these hearts does it yield abundant fruit. And these fruits are to retrench their worldly life and to practice all those virtues which a Christian should sow as to please God and to save his soul. You see from the words of Jesus Christ how few persons there are who derive any benefit from the word of God, as among four parts, only one part yielded fruit. Now, my brethren, you wish to be that fourth part. Listen then with great desire to the word of God. Put aside all sin, the world with its pleasures, your inordinate desires and passions. 
form good solid resolutions and put them in practice at the first and every opportunity offered afterward. And rest assured, you will bear fruit a hundredfold. Amen.